Hi friends, this is Manoj, the German trainer. In this session, we are going to talk about prepositions. So welcome to Insightful German and Insight into German Grammar. We are going to talk about preposition in this session. Now, prepositions are the most idiomatic part of speech, each with a vast number of meanings in many cases. The following can only serve as a guide to the usage of German prepositions. To have listed English prepositions with their various translations into German would have been unwieldy and the student would have been prevented from getting a feeling for the nuances of meaning associated with each individual German preposition. By doing the reverse, you can get some idea of the various meanings of each German preposition. It should be noted that some preposition can be used as adverbs too. For example, das Geschäft is zu, das Licht war aus. Only the most usual meanings of each preposition in English are given next to the German form at the beginning of each entry. For example, at, on, an, although in reality they may be rendered in my right ways. Specific to German preposition is that they govern a given case. For example, that is any noun or pronoun following a preposition must be in the accusative, dative or genitive case. In this session, we are going to talk about accusative. Depending on the preposition, but sometimes also depending on the connotation of the preposition concerned. As there is a group of very common prepositions that are called two-way prepositions, which are very excellent prepositions, since they can take either the accusative or the dative case. There are many verbs in both German and English that take a prepositional object, but the preposition required in German is often different from that used in English. Example, sterben an, which is to die off, it takes dative. Warten auf, which is to wait for, it takes accusative. There are also quite a lot of adjectives in both German and English that take a prepositional object, but the preposition required in German is often different from from that used in English, reich an, which is rich in, it takes dative, stolz auf, proud of, it takes accusative. Now let's talk about accusative preposition. These eight prepositions require any noun or pronoun that follows them to be in accusative cases. Für, um, durch, gegen, entlang, bis, ohne, wieder. Them. Now, the problem is how to memorize these eight prepositions. So, there is a small acronym called FUJBAU, or you can create your own FUJBAU. F stands for FUR, U stands for OM, D stands for DUSH, and so on. So, these, this is a word created using these eight initials of these prepositions. Let's talk about BIS, our first preposition. It means until, by, as far as. The meaning of this preposition is up to a certain point in time or place. The most common meaning of this preposition is until or till with reference to time. Example, er bleibt bis next woche. He is staying till next week. Bis morgen. See you tomorrow. To Germans, by with reference to time is also rendered by bis. Example, ich will das Buch bitte bis nächste Woche zurück haben. Now, in this way, this bis is representing by, not until. By. By next week. So, I want to have the book back by next week, please. Bis wann muss ich wieder hier sein? By when must I be back here? Idioms like the following incorporating bis, where it translates as to. Illustrate its underlying meaning of from A to B, from this to that. Example, von Kopf bis Fuß, von oben bis unten. It is a peculiarity of bis and only this preposition that when a determiner stands between it and the following noun, it must be used together with another preposition and that second preposition. And that second preposition determines the case of noun. There are no determiners in above examples. We have seen there were no determiners, but in these ones, we have determiners. A variety of prepositions are used with bis, and it is extremely difficult to formulate rules for which one is appropriate for a given context. Example, es muss bis zum Jahr 2020 eine Lösung gefunden werden. Wir werden bis 
in das nächste Jahrhundert eine Lösung suchen. Das Wasser kam bis an seinen Mund. The water came up as far as his mouth. Er ging bis an den Zaun und nicht weiter. Okay, this is how we use. Durch. The primary meaning of durch is through. Wir sind quer durch die Mitte der Stadt gefahren. There is a minority of the cases where durch is better rendered by by in English. Example, ich habe es durch Zufall gehört. I heard it through by chance. Durch can also rendered by in the passive where the agent of the action is not present. Example, das Restaurant ist durch Feuer zerstört worden. Entlang, which is along. Entlang differs from nearly all other prepositions in that it follows its noun. Example, sie gingen den Fluss entlang. They walked along the river. It is possibly somewhat more common, however, to use entlang in combination with an plus dative where exactly same meaning. So, sie gingen am Fluss entlang. Sie gingen den Fluss entlang. Both mean same. Next. Fewer, which means for. Fewer nearly always equates to for. Ich hab ein Geschenk für dich. Wie viel hast du dafür bezahlt? In idioms of these kind, it renders by. Schritt für Schritt, step by step. Das ist Wort für Wort, was er gesagt hat. This is word by word, what he said. Gegen, which is against or around. The primary meaning of gegen is against. Stell die Leiter gegen die Wand. Ich habe nichts gegen ihn. A commonly second meaning of gegen is approximately or around with numeral quantities. Numerical quantity. Example. Er kam so gegen 8 Uhr an. Es tauchten plötzlich gegen 50 Kinder auf. Ohne, without. Nur er war ohne Krawatte. Ohne is never followed by an indefinite article. It must be noted. This is very important to know that it will never followed by an indefinite article. Er geht nie ohne seinen Hund spazieren. Ohne is also used as conjunction which will be elaborated in coming sessions. Um, around, at. The primary meaning of um is around. Ich bin zweimal um die Welt geflogen. Um also renders at with the time of the day. For example, der Film fängt um halb acht an. Wieder, which is against. Though it is not commonly used in everyday German, it is a formal synonym of gegen and is usually found with the meaning against in compounds. Example, wieder alles. Example, wieder erwarten ist das Wetter auf einmal umgeschlagen. Against all expectations, the weather suddenly changed. So it is simply replacing gegen. It's not so commonly used. I hope you like the session. So yes, kindly subscribe to my channel, Insightful German, and stay tuned for more such lessons in future. I'll be back with my next session over Tatif. Thank you. Have a great day.